Truckers like you help prevent a serious threat that has the potential to cause a fatal disease in American people. It could result in severe damage to the U.S. economy, but it's a hazard you can help prevent. The danger is bovine spongiform encephalopathy, or BSE. Now, if you're like most people, you've probably never heard of BSE. That's what scientists call it. However, there's a good chance that you have heard it by another name, mad cow disease. They're one and the same. Even though you may have heard of it, you probably don't know much about the disease or how it originated. So where did BSE come from? This is the United Kingdom in the early 1990s at the height of its BSE crisis. Hundreds of thousands of cattle were slaughtered to stop its spread. Scientists have linked BSE with a similar brain disease in people, and more than 180 people have died, with even more deaths expected. The best scientific evidence indicates one cause was from eating food contaminated with BSE. But that's not all. Though the problem was, for the most part, restricted to the United Kingdom, it spread to other countries. More recently, a number of cases have been identified in Canada and the United States. How is BSE spread? Scientists concluded that BSE was spread by feeding contaminated meat and bone meal to cattle. Part of the problem was that signs of BSE didn't show up right away in infected cows. That's because the disease develops gradually, taking four to five years before infected animals display signs of being sick. During that long period of time, officials in the United Kingdom weren't aware that anything was wrong. Consequently, more and more cattle became infected. Then it was too late. BSE began to show itself, threatening the United Kingdom's livestock industry, its national economy, and its public health. So what does BSE have to do with you? Although only a few cases of BSE have been detected in the United States, BSE is still a concern. To prevent an outbreak of BSE, it's important that specific procedures be followed by everyone who's involved in our nation's food supply, including truckers like you who transport feed materials. Here's what's happening. For starters, the U.S. government has implemented stringent import controls to try to keep materials that might contain BSE out of this country. As a further safeguard, the Food and Drug Administration prohibits meat and bone meal and similar products from mammals like cattle and sheep from being fed back to cattle and other ruminants. What's a ruminant? Well, cows, sheep, deer, and elk are ruminants. They share one trait in common. They chew their cud. Meat and bone meal materials that come from ruminants, however, aren't completely prohibited they can still be fed safely to other animals like dogs, hogs, and chickens. Those species don't develop BSE. But again, meat and bone meal derived from ruminants cannot be fed back to ruminants. That's where you come in. As a trucker, it's your responsibility to make sure that your truck is clean between shipments of feed containing meat and bone meal or other materials from mammals and feed for cattle and other ruminants to avoid cross-contamination. That's especially important when it comes to preventing BSE. Unfortunately, only one incident could create a major problem. As a trucker who regularly hauls feed products, you can help prevent BSE. First, you should figure out exactly what you're hauling. Look closely at shipping documents and product labels to see if you're carrying products prohibited from being fed to ruminants. How can you tell? Just check the bill of lading or product label to see if it contains the following statement. 
do not feed to cattle or other ruminants. FDA requires that this statement be present if the product is not to be fed to ruminants. If you see this statement, the law requires that your truck be cleaned thoroughly, whether it's a hopper bottom or a dump trailer, before you haul feed for ruminants, even though you're anxious to get back on the road. Here's why. The agent that causes BSC can be passed on through just one gram of infectious material. Well, that's not much at all. In fact, this is what a gram looks like. So even a minute quantity of infectious material could spread BSC. That's why it's so important to properly clean your vehicle. That also applies if you're transporting such products in bags or other types of packages, since they can tear, spilling part of their contents. A truck hauling them needs to be cleaned just as carefully as one that's used for bulk loads. How can you properly clean your truck? If you work for a trucking company, your boss should provide you with a set of clean-out procedures. If he hasn't, ask for it. If you're an independent trucker, you'll need to decide what clean-out methods are most effective. At the end of this video, you'll learn where to go for help when doing that. There are several methods that can be used when cleaning a truck, either separately or in combination. The most common procedures involve some physical means of removing feed from your truck. For example, thoroughly sweeping with a broom. This may take under 10 minutes, which isn't a lot of time when you think about it. Other clean-out techniques involve vacuuming, washing, or using flush materials. Sweeping is a fast and reliable way to make sure nothing is left over from the previous load. Be sure to do it thoroughly. Remember, it just takes a small amount of contaminated material to spread BSE. Vacuuming is also an effective way of removing any remaining materials. Washing is effective, but this method isn't used very often. That's because washing a truck takes more time and requires special equipment. Plus, the truck should be dry before being reloaded. For feed trailers or conveyances with augering equipment, Using flush materials like ground corn and soybean meal is also effective, but this technique isn't that common for trucks either. The reason is that you need a large quantity of flush materials to adequately clean the truck. Plus, after the flush materials have been used, they need to be labeled with the required statement and can't be fed to cattle or other ruminants. Finally, I realize that the only time you make money is when you're behind the wheel not when you're cleaning out your trailer. If BSE became a significant problem in the U.S., it would hurt everybody, including truckers like you. U.S. consumers would be alarmed, which would hurt the feed and meat industries. Export markets for U.S. beef could suffer long-term damage, as has happened in other countries. And all that could seriously affect your livelihood. It's in your best interest to take the time to completely clean your truck between making deliveries of ruminant and non-ruminant feed. Not only is it the law, but it's about safeguarding your livelihood and protecting our nation's economy. More importantly, it's about protecting your health and the health of all Americans. No one wants BSC in the United States, it's that simple. But everyone must play his or her part, including you. If you want more information about BSE, talk to the feed mill manager, the ingredient suppliers you take shipments from, or check in with the FDA at www.fda.gov CVM. Remember, do your part. Clean your truck. Prevent BSE from getting a foothold in the United States. Hey, thanks for taking the time to listen.